Hi again, everyone. It's Teresa Sigmund, founder and designer of Seam Sensational. And I have again with me here today, Leslie, my excellent friend and fellow dancer. Now, this is a dress I made for her in 1998 or 99. Mm -hmm. I have to say, this is one of my all time favorite Latin dresses. It, after all these years, it still really is. However, she has lost quite a bit of weight since this dress was initially made. And it's kind of a sack on her, it really is now. So there are quite a lot of things going wrong on here, which if you were considering buying this as a used Latin dress, you would want to take them all into consideration. One, you'll notice, let's just start at the top and work our way down. You'll notice that the shoulders do not stay on. She was quite a bit broader before, and so it filled everything out and then made it, it helped it stay on. But because she's so much narrow in the bust in the back than before, there's nothing holding it up. Go ahead and turn around, please. So what you would need to do with this, and I am not a fan of doing this at all, but in this particular instance, you really need to, you'll need to run a piece of flesh colored elastic from this shoulder over to that shoulder. And you wanna do it as high up on the neck as possible so that it doesn't show very much. If you do it across the back, one, it's not as effective, and two, it just looks horrible and ruins the line of the dress. So you'll want to make sure that flesh-colored elastic goes across the very top, and that would take care of that and help keep it on her now. Overall, the back fits okay until you actually start pulling it out, and then it's really pretty big. Okay, go ahead and turn back to front again. The sleeves overall are a little... You know, they're loose enough, I would actually go to the trouble of taking them in. Um, if you've watched the ball gown video, the ball gown was um, overall better fitting. Part of that was just the fabric and the bias and the fact that it doesn't have so many rhinestones on it to, to battle. But I would go ahead and take these sleeves in because it's really pretty poochy in there. Sleeve length is excellent. You wouldn't have to miss with that but you do have a, a bit up in there. Not too many rhinestones to peel off though, so that's actually an easy fix. So neck and arm, shoulders and armpits are a pretty easy fix. Now, there are a couple of rhinestones missing on this, and I'm really surprised it's only a couple. I mean, literally, I see two. One thing to consider as you are buying used dresses is the older they get, the glue starts to deteriorate and or the backing from the stones starts to disconnect from the actual stone itself. So in this particular spot where she lost a stone, the silver backing stayed on the dress, the rhinestone fell off. So that wasn't even the glue weakening, that was actually the stone just separating. That is a problem the older the dresses get. Um, visually, this dress is in excellent condition. There are no snags. There's two rhinestones missing that I can see. So in that sense, it's, it's, a, it's immaculate. It's a beautiful, beautiful dress. However, it is really quite large. Normally, in order to make dresses fit well, I like to take a little bit in at each seam just because it makes everything fit better and it keeps the proportions correct. However, given that there are about 5 million rhinestones on this awesome skirt, I would try to take in as much as possible on each seam allowance. And I'm gonna have you scooch over just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and pin in some of this just so you get an idea of what our options are. I'm literally taking in about two to two and a half inches on each side here. And then you would of course taper that in all the way up to the waistband. Now the problem with this is where you get into major time consuming is, and the reason that you only wanna take it in on each side is because you've got all these rhinestones that you're battling and you've all these things have to be peeled off. You'll have to take it in, reshape the point, and then re-rhinestone. So if you only do that on the two side seams, it really cuts down on your amount of work. Also, because Leslie is so much narrower than she used to be, the skirt is hanging what I consider too long on her now. Before, it was a good bit shorter. So if she were buying this dress, you know, in an ideal world, um, these two underskirts, which are just two layers of mesh, 
are stitched with one seam right around the bodice. I would go ahead and pop that seam and pull up the two layers of underskirts so that they ended up hitting somewhere at about this length, which is kind of a more appropriate Latin dress length. It's a little sexier, a little less matronly, but yet she's still covered enough. And then, so it would basically just be closing the gap between these two turquoise layers. Once again, though, you've got all these rhinestones. You, taking these underskirts off would not be a problem. Putting it back on would be. Your two options would be to hand sew on the two underskirts once you raise them up and cut off the excess, or it would be peeling off all the rhinestones, machine stitching it on, and then putting all the rhinestones back on, of course. As far as the dress goes, oh, I love this dress. I would buy it in a heartbeat. <laughs> but you do have to take in to consideration your time commitment for doing these alterations. Or if you're not gonna do the alterations yourself, paying someone else to do it. But we haven't even taken a look at the leotard underneath yet. And this dress is completely separate from the leotard. I mean, it's the only place it's connected is up at the neckline. And one of the reasons I really like to do that is because it gives a fantastic smooth finish on the outside, which as we age and you know we don't have a super tight body, having these two separate dresses is a really great way to accentuate the positive and diminish things you don't necessarily want to you know, accentuate. If we peel this up, pull this up, go ahead and rotate if you would please, okay? We've got a seriously baggy butt, <laughs> okay? Not so great. Now, it's not the end of the world. Um, you don't necessarily have to correct this. Because this skirt is longer, this would not show a whole lot. But it feels probably like she's wearing a diaper, and that's not really a great feeling. So you would want to go in, in an ideal world, and shorten the stride, as well as take in the side seams here. So once again, that just gives you some tips on what to look out for if you're buying a used dress and what kind of work that might have to go into it. You always have to weigh how it looks on you, how you feel in it, you know, what the color is and what it will take to make it fit your body shape and size. So there you go. I think this dress is some, if Leslie were buying this dress from herself, she would, it would be quite a big investment if she were paying me to fix it or if she were trying to do it herself. It's a big time investment because of all the rhinestones. It's a really awesome dress though, so it would be, that would be a hard call. Yes. But there you go. Food for thought when you're considering buying your used Latin dress or a used ice skating dress. I hope this has been of service for you and thanks again to Leslie for joining me today and I will see you all in yet another video. Thanks so much.